I think she even saw me. I'm right here. When I went to the garden center the other day, I picked up some more flowers and vegetables and I couldn't pass these up because it's the color that I love, that somewhat periwinkle purple blue. Now, I have never had this particular plant before. This is called Lily of the Nile. They're calling it blue, but I say it's more of a purple, purple blue. And I've had many Eclamatus before, but I've never had this color. And when I saw it, they hit my cart so fast. Now, what I was first thinking was for over the arch. How beautiful would these be going up over the garden? But when I read it more so, I read this. Low maintenance, easy to grow, compact. So this particular Eclamatus only goes five to six feet tall. So now I'm trying to figure out where I want to plant them because my arch is certainly taller than that and they would just go part way up unless I find a third to intermingle with it. I'm not sure. I just thought that would be beautiful. So now I've got to find where I want to put them. I'm thinking now maybe over by the lavender I just showed you and that would be my periwinkle purple white garden because I want the moon garden at night and I love these purple blues. I think that's gonna be the plan, to have this color over there. This interior garden will be the deeper purples, the fuchsia, the darker blues, and we have some of the lighter purples as well. But I do think, looking out the window during the day, I wanna see this periwinkle blue, and then the whites. Now, I don't know if I shared the reason I love periwinkle. When I was little, there's a little tiny insect that when it flies, it looks very fluffy. And I'm gonna to try to find an old photo I have of it that I did from a very old blog post. When it flies and when it's in the right light, it looks like periwinkle blue. It's just so pretty and it's so tiny. I did, I, it's very, very tiny. And when I was little, I thought they were fairies. For sure, I thought they were fairies. And one of the photos that I'm going to show you it looks like a fairy, um, to me at least. And then, while growing up also, a little butterfly. And off the top of my head, I believe it's called a blue azure. I'm going to look that up to confirm. But those two insects, that little flying insect that I guess now eats plants that I shouldn't like, but it will last in my garden forever. I'm not gonna touch it because it's my little fairy. And that little butterfly gave me my love of periwinkle. That little first insect also gave me my love of fairies. So in my garden, you might have seen in last week's video, I have a fairy here. And in many of my rooms in the house, I have a fairy hidden. It freaks Ben out. He just doesn't like knowing that there's something there staring at him. I didn't even do my fairy Christmas tree last year. I don't know why, but I will probably do that this year. So that is the reason I love periwinkle and that paint I just showed you, who knows what I'm gonna use that on. I'm thinking maybe some sort of chair that I can tuck within the greenery that just looks like a little place that a fairy might wanna sit. It might be a small child's chair. It might be a full-size chair with a plant on it. I don't know, but I can assure you that I will be painting something or some things 
in those two shades of the, the blue that I showed you, the periwinkle and also the deeper one that will go in this garden here. Right now, but this petunia also is a color that I love. These will be going out in the front urns. But I'm standing here and I was making a decision, unbeknownst to Ben. Um, I was in our pantry and I couldn't see out. This tree had grown so big. So here's my thought. This tree, it's going to go, I think, so that I can make a flat platform up here, up to the top, and then the grill can go up there just a bit, not too close to the house, but where I have some of the tree trimmings here, because once again, I wanted to see out of the, the butler's pantry. And that way I'll have a completely open area. Now we are thinking of doing this ourselves. And if we do, I can already see an imaginary line where I'd rather have it come out to. So once we finish a lot of our other small projects, this might be next, I'm not sure could always do a little built out deck, but that's not the hopes. But yeah, so going back to what I was talking about, this tree I think is going to go and there's actually cuttings from two or three others. So there was a lot here at one point, somebody else took them down. That will also give me more light in the library, which right now it's blocking the window for that. It's then that's a very dark room, so it'll be beneficial. And then I can even do a window box which I think would be, would be fun, nice. Yeah, I think that's a decision I completely made on my own and gonna go with it. It's not coming down now, but I did check for birds and I will check again completely before I do anything. So we just got back from dinner. Remember I mentioned about cutting a little tree in the back of the house, but Ben didn't know. Well, he came home and I did start trimming it. And the reason I'm trimming it little by little is I wanted to make sure there were no bird's nests because the tree here to the right is like a condominium. There's a lot of birds. For some reason, not one nest, a very old, I should say a very old, old nest was in here, but nothing. So I'm going to do a little more trimming tomorrow and then I will get out my battery operated saw and cut it at the bottom and we'll have the corner here. Because I was surprised, Ben really did like the idea of getting the grill off of this part. We're either going to put it here or he said it can go in the garage and then I'll have a little more garden area. I'm not sure what we'll do next. but. The tree will be gone, hopefully, or thinking by the weekend. So I'm still in heels. And ben suggests we go for a ride in the Gator. We're gonna go to a little pond that is in the neighborhood. So got my purse, shoes, high heels, pond, why not? Is there space for me? This is living in the country. I don't want to jinx myself, but for some reason, the mosquitoes have not been that bad lately. We've been able to come outside and enjoy. And like I said, not the best shoes to walk around in the woods but that's okay. We deal, we do it. Over here is a little river. And when I do some of the videos and I hear the rushing river, this is it. Oh, that's a new bridge. That bridge was not here a few months ago. So much for me trying to keep my pants clean. Remember earlier I was gardening and I didn't want to get these dirty? Well, yes, Willow's gonna be sitting next to me and 
I think that ship has sailed. Well, if you want to drive, I can sit in the middle and she can sit in the end. Ooh, that will work. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ben is smart. Oh, it's good. Wait, wait. Okay. You ready, Willa? Okay. This is why I'm glad I didn't sit next to Willow. I love her, but not with beige pants. The sun just came out this is beautiful but what i wanted to show you what i'm doing right now is i'm getting the peonies ready for their second showing now everybody does this different everybody who has peonies have their own certain way now i have a couple friends that when their plants are growing and they have multiple buds on one plant and there's one that's starting to bloom they might cut off the bud so that this flower will get nice, big, and healthy, and beautiful. Some will take off the buds when they're at this marshmallow stage, and you can wrap them in paper, put them in your refrigerator, and they will last a month, two months. You take them out, and then they will bloom once you put them in water, but they do last a little bit of a shorter time. You only get about a week from them. What I like to do the ones that I don't cut to bring inside, I do leave them all on the stem. And I try to support some. I don't know if I have some here. Well, I have, I have some branches in here, which didn't do a lot of support because this was from last year and it's very fragile. But I do have some clipped to stakes that I'll show you in a moment. And when there are two, I leave them. But what I just did is I went around and I clipped all of the spent heads, which I'm gonna clip that one I just saw. And somebody asked about these. I wanted to see if I liked them, which I do. And I actually am going to put these on my store. I have to order them, but these will be available. But what I'm gonna do is just cut this back. And we've got some other peonies here that will open up. 
So I've been going around the yard doing a lot of deadheading, not just with the peonies, but I've been doing the irises. Um, but over here, let me show you the peonies that I have holding up because they're very top heavy and I don't have them tight together like some gardeners do. So they're not holding each other up. I have them here with some little clips that I got at a garden center. And these now are being supported and once they bloom, they'll be all set. The ones that were bent or were too short or that I was taking off, I cut them and I have them in some water until I get them inside to, re, to put them in a little arrangement. And then these are some of the buds that once again were probably on a broken stem and I will get those ready as well. Let's say I want to bring these in and they're not the marshmallow stage, which is more like, let me see if I have one here. This one's almost the marshmallow stage. Hi, Aunt. It's a little soft like a marshmallow. That I could take inside, wrap in paper and put it in my fridge. It will last a couple months and then it will bloom. But what I do sometimes if I have to bring these in, if they get broken or if they're part of a, a display, I first can, you can rinse them off to get that nice, nectar off where the ants love to eat the ants are good the ants are helping them get that nectar off these are the guard petals and without the ants the guard petals have a hard time opening if i bring these in i can swish them in water to get the nectar off but i also start to peel apart the guard petals and i will show you some a little bit later that have opened from doing that Here's something I wouldn't try at home. This peony, I cut it when it was a bud just to sketch what it looked like with the guard petals around it for my little sketchbook. And it laid on my table for a few days. Out of water, nothing. Well, I put it in this little container of water and I say this is about three days later, it's opening. Peonies are not as fragile as they look. Now this particular grouping is a little worse for wear. I showed you a video earlier, or it might be later in this video. That was several days ago. So they're getting about ready to be changed out. The buds will still be opening, but the ones that are open do need to be changed. I thought I'd take a little opportunity to answer some of your questions and comments during this little mini house tour of the kitchen, the porch, tavern, and maybe a couple other little areas of the house. And then we'll do a few other things here in the video. So let's start with the floor up. I had quite a few questions about this runner. This is Karistan, and this particular one is probably I'm going to guess 15 years old, maybe 16. As of a couple years ago, it was still current. I don't know the name. Actually, I could probably look at the tag for us, couldn't I? Let's see. Let's run that end. Let me see. No, nope, I don't have it on this. I'll take a better look later. But Karistan, and you might be able to find it at a local higher-end carpet store. Macy's used to carry Karistan. If they still have that, I'm not sure. So I'm going to go over some things. You might hear me repeat myself from past videos, but once again, I'm answering questions from a lot of newcomers. The cabinet color is White River from Benjamin Moore, as are the doors. Speaking of doors, I was asked, What's behind these three doors? Well, there's not a lot of prizes like you see in a game show. The one on the left goes upstairs, the middle goes to the basement, and the one on the right is another food pantry. I was asked, where did I get this little piece of furniture? 
I actually had this in one of my retail stores. We used to sell hooker furniture. I don't know if it's still available with the company or not, but I did have it in the library just until we finished this kitchen. I'm doing it for size. I'm gonna be looking for something that is more counter height and not much wider than this. But it has worked out quite well here in the kitchen. So for now, it's staying. What else have I been asked? Uh, windows. Once again, these are not, and I should say, this is not sponsored at all. We went with Pella for these windows. We have done Marvin, we have done Anderson, we have done Harvey. This is our first time doing Pella and we really like them. What I like about this window is the screens are hidden inside of the window. So when we look out, we have a nice clear view. But over here, I'm gonna take you to one of the end ones that we have open. The screen is actually down inside here. Let me see if I can do this with one hand. And it rolls into the bottom, if you can see that. And then it comes up. And it's held by a magnet. I don't think I mentioned that before. So there's a magnet here. If we want, we can just take the magnet off and we close them each night for that. And Queen Bess, oh, so many of you already know about Queen Bess, but our new subscribers, she was found at a thrift store and I went several times. And the third time I said, I just have to buy her because I keep looking at it. And she was on sale at that point. I do think, I don't know if I paid $2.99 or if I paid $200. In one of my old videos, I'm guessing one of you will be able to tell me what I paid because I don't remember at this point. But she has been an uh, inspiration here in this kitchen and also in Groton House's kitchen. And while I'm here, I want to show you this sweet little bird feeder my neighbor made and brought over to me. Whoops, gonna spin there and hang that up there. You put the seeds down. I thought that was very cute. I'm going to wait till said bear is not in the area because I think he'd like to have a cup of tea, a spot of tea. Cushions are coming in soon. Fabric is being picked up and we will be getting those soon as possible. And my view looking out this window onto the porch. So we'll be able to sit here in the kitchen and look out at the gardens. I still have not painted the door the darker green, but I will be doing so. Once again, for the new followers, this, these four chairs are from England, but I bought these at a consignment store for $45 each. If you were to find these online, what I did when I first bought them and they were still current at some stores, 900 to 980 per chair. So I got a really good deal. The mirror over this area, Actually, my mother found it at her local consignment shop where she lives, and I think she paid $10 for that. I'm just gonna switch my hands here. This glass dome and Lazy Susan, I just plopped it there because it was here on the center of the table a while ago, just because I had no other place for it. I will find some areas soon. I had the Lazy Susan in the middle with the candlesticks, but those moved to over the kitchen sink. So I have them over here right now. Oh, this is something I just left out to remind to share with you. This welcome candle with the pineapple and the thank you card. It's because when I was getting my candles that I sell in the shop and at the store, the balsam citrus, the balsam woods, and the apple orchard, I mentioned I would love to see a pineapple meaning welcome like we do here in the East Coast or on the East Coast. And all of a sudden, boom, oh, I got uh, some sticky stuff here. We've got a candle here. So I'm going to look at bringing some of those on board. But that was very sweet that, um, that she actually ended up making them up. I have yet to redo the cabinets. I set them up quickly when they first went up. I am going to do them over again, but that's not gonna be for quite a while. I'm gonna add a little bit more color. I'll have our coffee mugs up there and whatnot. 
but I did end up rehanging the sweet cream sign that I had at the other house. I've had a lot of questions or concerns about the print or the painting over the stove. It does have a little spotting from the other home and this one it's an inexpensive reproduction and it's been doing fine there so I'm okay with what happens. If I'm doing something very messy I just take it off the hook. Luckily now this is wood so I just have a little nail there holding it up. In the butler's pantry I haven't done really anything lately in here but one thing I noticed I was gonna oh I have two things I can show you oops let's go see what Willow's barking at it was Willow's food delivery all right so let me show you let's go back to the butler's print here I'm gonna show you what I was working on I made myself a note the other day I had some herbs in here I was hanging them on anything I could find because I don't have my herb drying shed like I did before, which I will create someplace. I actually bought some hanging items to go up in the loft, but I haven't done it yet. But at Groton House, inside, I don't even remember the video, I had tension rods inside the window. So the other day I came in here and I made myself a little note to paint compression rods to match the color of the butler's pantry. I made myself a little note. So that's gonna be one of my fun projects. I will have some tension rods here and I can hang some herbs. Now, if you've been following along, you may remember I showed the hyacinth pods that I cut. I wanted to share with you these hyacinth pods. If they're still attached, which they're not, they split open and you can collect the seeds, let them dry and plant them. So I know I've got more hyacinths all around the yard. I actually cut these because I want to sketch them later. I just thought they were really, really cool. I mean, to see that these large pods, and I know there's probably a technical name for it, but they're going to be pods here today. And I just, uh, like I said, I wasn't even thinking about collecting them or harvesting them for their seeds. Well, luckily, I let these pods stay in the house and they actually started to dry up on their own and drop seeds. And I'm going to show you in a minute what it looks like now. And I didn't know that I could save the seeds. Well, they actually dried up in my home and dropped the seeds themselves. So I thought that was great and I didn't even get a chance to go get the other ones so I do have these and I will save them and put them into my seed booklet that I put together. Now somebody also asked about the poppies and seeds or where to get them. I'm going to collect seeds this year. I'm going to see if I can get enough to actually put on the store. I'm not sure how it will work out but we'll see. Really nothing has changed here in the butler's pantry. I just have a couple of my baskets. I grab this one all the time. I've used that a few times, oops, going out and about. And I use the big one when we take a, a road trip and I wanna bring some ice packs. I'm gonna break into the video here because I forgot to share the color of the cabinets. Now this is the next morning, so the coloring's a little bit off. It's gloomy out, but the color is Briarwood. And that is also a Benjamin Moore color. And then I've been asked about the handles I found these at Home Depot and I'm going to see if I can get a link and put that below for those of you who are interested. But like I said, these are all Home Depot. And the wallpaper is from York. I'm gonna forget the name. Sorry, I will look that up. I'm gonna put together a page on my website that has the colors and the wallpapers here at Sugarwood. I was asked a couple times about this painting behind the sink and am I afraid of it being damaged and this and that. And I did a lot of tests before I even put this up. Could this down the road get some splattering somehow? Yes, I guess so. But for the most part, I went a couple months before putting this up, used the faucet, I've been making coffee, the works, 
and really this gets such little use other than filling the container for the coffee maker it's been fine and I do love this painting I probably mentioned already that my faucets here are two different finishes but I'm okay with that so yep I got some white claw there trying that for the first time I haven't had it yet but the kids did and they seem to like it and over here just our little area where we drop our purses and keys and in the butler's pantry you got to have the butler speaks book right that has a lot of fun info in it actually I did have somebody mention that this is not a butler's pantry it's a pantry I personally like to call it a butler's pantry reason being it does have a sink an oven and a refrigerator and a place to have food and all kinds of other things so I'm going to allow myself to call it a butler's pantry and somewhere I actually found a sign where I, I hit it I hit it because it was I'm it's it's a pantry sign I hope I can get this out it's one of those things I'm trying to remember where I put it and I it actually but this one says pantry instead of butler's pantry I was going to put it over the door here in the kitchen but I don't have enough space for this bracket it's just a little too long so it might go on either side or somewhere or nowhere at all and I'll just bring it to the shop and resell that but I thought it was cute so I'm just going to now put it back where it was back, back where it was but I do love being in this butler's pantry coming in the morning getting the coffee i gotta make some more coffee in a while I, I make it every night before but looking out here i now have a full view where the tree used to block every bit of light every view i just put some chairs there because i have the table on the porch now between the two wicker chairs but we're going to do some modifying out there Now let me show you what's going on in the tavern. We're going to see some, some piles here and there. We're going to see some dust. It's better than it was. I did a little picking up before I did this tour with you. I thought I would quickly share with you what I did here in the tavern so far. Now at my other home, I used a caulking gun to fill all the creases and crevices. But here I decided to use spackling and that allowed me to then go back with a razor and clean it really good in the corners, sand it down well. It took longer to do, but the end result I'm really pleased with. and don't mind the mess and it was a lot worse trust me but I wanted to show you what's going on in here here are the drawers that I took out of that piece that's on the porch so our shoes would fit I have no idea we're going to do with these but I will find a place but I wanted to show you here in the tavern what they did they did finish up some molding and they put trim at the top and I did not realize how bad the ceiling was until the trim went up. Look at the difference from left to right. Now this is all old. Everything was repaired from previous owners, but this room, it still had the same wonky ceiling. So it goes from very wide at the top, a dip, and then kind of wide at the end. And at first I'm like, hmm, am I gonna be able to deal with that? Absolutely, because this shows the character of the house. If this was brand new with a straight ceiling, Oh, no way, uh-uh, I would not be able to deal with that. But this shows the character of this old house. This was the master bedroom when this was just a tiny little cape without all the additions. There was even a fireplace here and you can see where there was a hearth. 
Now, I already confirmed there was a fireplace by opening up that little secret door I believe I showed with all the chimneys in the back, but also the recent visit of one of the previous owner's children who came here when, in 1930 something, confirmed that this was a bedroom and that our great room was just an unfinished room with a well in the middle, which I think is pretty cool. I call it great room, library, it goes back and forth if you get confused. It is just one room, it's not more than one. So that's what I'm working on in here. I just need to do some more spackling. I have some more wood to cut and I've been putting it off once again until I learn that jigsaw, but it's very close to being done. And then I'll do a second coat and I have the doors that are on the inside of this room to do first, or to do. My new vacuum. I'm gonna share that later, but it'll be nice when the room gets a little bit more lit up and I can show you more. And trust me, there is plenty more to do. And the other day, the little boy painting, or it's not really a painting, it's a reproduction, fell off the wall. And if you have an old home, you probably will understand this. Behind these walls is slats and horsehair plaster and sometimes when you hit a nail and you hit one of those slats, it just bounces off of it. It does not go through it and make a nice connection. So that's what happened here. I need to actually get a drill and drill through that little slat so that I can rehang this little guy back up in the room. But that's it. Um, I think we'll go over a few more things here in the house and I know there are some more questions. I might have to go through the list, but in next month we'll be seeing this walkway being done over. And there's those clouds. We've got storms coming and going, but it's beautiful. And here's my fabric getting ready for the workroom to pick it up on Sunday. And then those cushions will hopefully be back soon. standing here. I can even see outside from the mirror, but something still, you know, once I get some wallpaper up here and I'm second guessing my saying the bee. I love the bee wallpaper for in here, don't get me wrong, but I also always envisioned it in the bedroom, so I'm not sure. We'll see. I still have plenty of time to change my mind over and over and over. We can do that. Even though I am far from ready to do a house tour, I'm going to give you a house tour. I cleaned up a little bit, but we're still not painted. I still have a lot to do, but I figured I'd pull some things together and just kind of break up the monotony for myself, actually. So I did move this faux Abervite tree, which I got thrifting, so I don't know where they came from. I put it in the corner here because I ended up temporarily, I think, moving the wicker pieces here. This way we can sit out and look out in the gardens on nice evenings and have dinner or watch a rainstorm come in. So I did this and then on, let's see, so straight ahead here, it's kind of blank. The walls still are not painted. I'm going to be doing the clapboards probably white like the house. But over here, let's see, I ended up hanging a lot of my baskets on this cabinet. And I did it so that the doors can still open. Might have to finagle a basket or two, but we rarely go in there. A lot of times that's just for storage. And then I ended up bringing out this piece that was in the tavern. For some of you who have been with me for a long time, you may recognize this from several moves, several locations. I did have it in Groton House at the base of the stairs near the kitchen and I took the drawers out just like I did here because the basket of shoes was just not working for me. Now I don't know if we'll keep doing this, but hopefully here. we will. I have the little periwinkle strainer here. I'm hoping to put in some moss and a little plant that looks like periwinkle and I might put it on the table. At first I did have some baskets up high. I did not like it. So, and I use all of these baskets constantly. 
it's not going to be just decoration. I want to have these at the ready. If I put them out in a shed, I wouldn't go out there to get them. So they are here. And like I said, I use them all the time. Over here, I ended up hanging a message board. I don't know if it's gonna stay here or not, but I'll put some paper and some pens. I still have some things here in the corner I have to find homes for. I'm going to do some sort of table, I believe, here with a lamp so that when we're in the kitchen, we can still look out and I'll show you a view from the kitchen. So once again, this is all I've done on the porch so far. Just cleaned it up a bit, just to make it a little bit neater. I'm going to be looking at something for the floors here. I still have some lights to add to that tree and the topiary balls. I don't know where those are going to stay. Like I said, this is temporary. I promised you a little house tour, so here it is. I know I'll be moving this around a lot. Once I finish painting and get the furniture we want in here, things will change. I have my little parasol here that I do use when I go out in the sun. I do not do well in the sun, so that is used also. I think we have some training to do. It's not going to happen though, is it? It's not. <laughs> Shut it off too soon. He did say he is training me though. So yes, I just put the shoes away. We just had our dinner. Ben's going to do a few things. We're going to sit and watch Outlander, which we love watching that show. Look forward to it starting up again. But right now, I'm just sitting, relaxing, and enjoying listening to the birds. So I just did something that is not the norm for me. I bought something on replacement.com and I don't usually order online there because their prices are a lot higher than if you find it at sea or out thrifting. But the reason I did was I found this fork in a bag of other forks I bought. I think it was $10 for a full bag. And I keep going towards this fork when I'm going into the drawer and I really like the weight of it. I like the look, I like the quality. And I did a little research and I found that this is called DJ. It's by DJ, actually. There's a little logo here on the back. It's hard to see. But Oneida bought the company in the 80s, and it's hotelware. And I believe that is one of the reasons I really like it, because of the weight, the quality. It's stainless, but it has a nice patina look to it. So I did a search online. I couldn't find any available. There was a lot sold out on Etsy. So when I went to replacement.com, I did find some soup bowls, I found some teaspoons, and some knives. Now, there was only, let's see, I have six of one, three, and three. But I figured this would be a fun hobby for me to be on the hunt for these when I'm out thrifting, at yard sales, at church sales, you name it. Um, it's very distinct pattern, weight, and I, like I said, I just like the quality of it. So this is a fun project that I'm creating for myself. I'm going to slowly build this over time. And I like knowing that this was hotel wear. I won't know the hotel it was from, but I think that's kind of cool little history about it. So wish me luck. I don't know how long this is going to take. It could take years. It could take a year. It could take months. But this is going to be a fun hunt for me. So a couple years back, a dear friend made me a little sign that said Erg Garden, which you might have seen on the porch, and also these little terracotta cups. And I didn't know what to do with them, or I should say little terracotta pots. And recently, I did put them in the garden. So here's my chives. Over here, we have the oregano. And then in this part of the garden over here, We have the basil, and then over here, oh, way over here. We have thyme. This is the lemon thyme. This is the lemon box that I redid from last year, so now I have some lemon balm coming up. I took out the lemongrass, I took out the lemon verbena, and 
I know that lemon balm can be very invasive. It can take over this box because I love lemon balm tea. Right now I just have them caged. Um, not sure why I had them. The rhubarb, I had three large shoots. I did pull them to help produce some smaller ones and it worked perfect. So pretty soon we will be making the family rhubarb custard pie and I have plenty coming up. Rhubarb, once again, it loves to be plucked. Don't cut it. You just wanna pull it from the bottom because if you cut it, it kind of ruins it and I didn't know that for many, many years. This is the stalk in here that I cut that, that flowered, but it's doing very well. I had one piece of asparagus that has turned to this. I think I'm gonna have to do this box over. Oh, here's another piece coming up. I don't think that's gonna feed anybody. Nope. Tomatoes are growing. I have some cucumbers, and this was marked cucumber, but I almost think it might be zucchini. I'm not sure yet. And the sweet banana peppers. They're starting to get, let me see if I can get it to focus. Let's see here, there we go. It's starting to get the blossom. Oh, oh dear. We have some blossoms there but I do have these little critters that are nibbling the plants. I did spray the organic spray. I'm just a little bummed out that the basil is taking the brunt of it. I've never had this happen before to basil. This was so very healthy. Just the other day, I picked it up at the nursery, planted it, and whatever's here had already gone at it. So I did use the organic spray and let's see what happens. But I've been pinching off any of these with hopes that um, give it a fresh start. What a shame. I love making pesto. I still have some ice cube trays full of pesto that I made, but I don't know. Whatever's here is having a delicious dinner. Well, kindred spirits, that was a long video for today. I was trying to play catch up. I'm not sure if I'll have a video for the 4th of July weekend, but I'm going to be working around the house and getting things done. So I will try if I can. Until next time, have a wonderful week. Bye now.